show with everything you could ever want to make or do right to your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's on today's show. Cryptic Fingertips puts red cabbage to the code cracking test. Grab yourself a pen and plenty of glue to make these brilliant beaded ball points. And improve your soccer skills with the help of the Fun Fingertips Chip Master. And for details on all the makes, you can video the show and play it back later, look on our website, or grab yourself a pen and some paper and jot it down straight away. Hold it, hold it, what are we doing here, Night of the Vampire or Fingertips? Fern, teeth. Sorry. This is the part of the programme where we show you how to make things from your garden or for your garden. So get some green fingertips and make some spooky chimes. Now I'm going to start off with a hanging frame. Now for this you need three pieces of bamboo, some twigs from your garden or some gardening cane about 20 centimetres long. You need to attach them into a triangle shape like this using elastic bands. So just tie one around each corner and it should stay nicely in position like this. Once you've got this shape you need to get three pieces of string and tie one piece to each corner. So just tie the last one. Do nice tight knot so it stays in place and then tie another knot at the top of the string and leave a piece of string so you can have a loop at the top and that's where you're going to hang your wind chimes from. Now I've got some oven bake clay here that glows in the dark and you can get this from any art or craft shop and I'm going to show you how to make the skulls. Get yourself two balls, one big one and one smaller one and you just squeeze the smaller one like that and join it onto the big one and all already you can see the skull shape. Now to neaten it up, get a wooden skewer and go around the bottom of it to join the two together like this. Go all the way round and then what you're going to do is make the nose hole and also the eye hole as well. So go all the way around the bottom and you want to make the nose hole just above the join. So that goes just about there. And here's a great fingertips tip. You'll like this fan, right? Yeah. As you're making the eye holes, you notice that the nose automatically goes into a spooky shape. Can you see that? Wow, that's Pretty good cool, and not yeah. bad. And now all you need to do is make a hole through the middle, very carefully push it all the way through, and you've now got a spooky skull ready for threading. OK, so place these on your baking tray uh, and as you can see, I've also made some bat shapes and a few bones and these look really cool. They're very easy to do, but look really cool if you round them off. The one thing to remember is make a hole in the middle of all of them so you can thread them later. Now just follow the instructions on the packaging for baking them. Now I've painted up these weirdy little flower pots. These ones are five centimetres across and these ones are seven centimetres across. And after I've painted them in white emulsion, I've painted them black, but I've left areas blank here and I've filled them with luminous paint. I've got some dribbly bits and also some scary eyes. Now when you've cooked and cooled off your skulls, they will be ready for threading. And there's just a couple of more things to do. Get yourself some drinking straws and chop them down into small bits because these are going to work as your spacers. And when you've done that, you get yourself some beads, black or green, and then you're ready for threading. Now the first thing you need to do is tie a big bead onto the end of your thread and put a knot on top of it. And then you can choose any bead at all you like. So I'm going to get a yellow one and thread that on. Just put that on there. And also maybe a ghoulish green one as well. And uh, actually, have one of your skulls as well, please, You Steve. can Is have one right? of my skulls, anyway. Why, thank you. So thread this on too. Pop that down onto your thread. And you can also add some straws as well, because they make an interesting shape. So you can put some of those on. And here's a tip for you. Before you put a flower pot on top, what you need to do is get a bead and thread it on. Then tie a knot on top of this bead. And this will act a bit like a pendulum in a moment. And now you need to get another bead and thread that on top. This needs to be quite a big bead, so put that on there. Now take one of your flower pots you've painted up, thread this onto it, and then you'll see this will sit nicely on top of the big bead and it will swing like that and you can see your skull too. Nice one. Now, as you're making your chimes, do compare the strings with each other to make sure that the bones and the pots all line up. Oh, listen to that bone rattling sound. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad. And you need to make three strings of beads. Yep, let me just tie my last one onto the corner there. There we are. So one for each point of the triangle. And you need to make a fourth one as well. 
that's going to be longer than all the others to help make that bone rattling noise. Of course, when you have the know-how, you could make the brightly coloured funky version. Well, how about adding shells and sandy pots for a beach coma version? Or just stick to the spooky. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't have a garden. Just hang them in your bedroom, turn off the lights, and let your fingertip spooky chimes glow. Magnifying glass. Camera. Telescope. Tape recorder. These are all well-known items of any spy's equipment. But here on Cryptic Fingertips, the part of the show where we keep you up to date with all the latest undercover secrets, I've come up with something else that'll be perfect for your secrecy kit. Nope, this isn't a piece of plain paper. It's actually a sheet of invisible writing written with bicarbonate of soda and invisible ink. Now, invisible ink is a pretty standard trick for any spy. But invisible ink is invisible. And if you're a spy, you need to be able to read invisible ink. The question is, how do you read it? What high-tech, state-of-the-art, highly sophisticated spine tool could you use? Red cabbage! It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But from red cabbage, you can make red cabbage water. Uh -huh. But how do you make red cabbage water? Well, all you need to do is get yourself a red cabbage, take off some leaves and pop them into a heat-proof jug or bowl and then, very carefully, pour some boiling water on top of your leaves. Now, if anyone gets suspicious when you're doing this, don't worry. All you need to do is memorise and repeat this phrase. Just making lunch. <laughs> and once the water's cooled, get rid of the cabbage itself and what you're left with is the key to revealing invisible ink. Watch this. Let's put this new bit of paper down. Hey, it works! It does work. But of course, as you know, here on Cryptic Fingertips, we know never to believe anything without proof. So, here's bicarbonate of soda dissolved in water, and here's red cabbage water. Pour this in there, and you see it goes a lovely aquamarine colour, perfect for showing up invisible ink. And once you know the trick, you can send cryptic messages in complete secrecy. Have you ever been in a position where you haven't got much money, you can't get to the shops and you haven't got a present to give? Well, why not try making one of these fingertips beaded ballpoint pens? They look fantastic and they make great gifts. Now, other than a ballpoint pen, all you need are some decorations. I've got some lovely mini colourful beads there. And I've got some nuts and bolts. And you need loads of PVA glue. So first, hold the tip of your pen, get some glue, and then just start painting it all the way down your pen, excluding the tip and the top. So just put a bit more on this side there. Now, as I've got beads, all I need to do is just roll my pen through them like this. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Hey, hey, get some more on that side. There we go. And because my nuts and bolts are quite heavy, I'm just going to do one side at a time. There we go. That should do for that side. Then you stick them in some modelling clay upright so they can dry. And the great thing about PVA glue is that it dries clear. And you do need to add one more layer of PVA glue over the top of your decorations to seal them all in place. Now, you don't just have to decorate your pens with beads and nuts. You could have a go at making like a show busy pen, like these two covering them in glitter, or maybe a sequin one, that's very nice. And even sweet wrappers look pretty cool. And to add a bit of class to your pen, how about a marble on the top? So go on, have a go, and right away. Got a minute. Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits you can find from around the house. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And you're not going to be this fun. This is all it takes, look. Just a hanger and a bit of string. Just that? I can't believe you're going to make something out of that. Seriously, I am. Well, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, so see if you can guess along the way. Are you ready, Steve? I am so ready. Have you prepared for your challenge? I've exercised. Good. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! OK, now, I can't always do this in a minute, so uh, do bear with me. Let me just hook this around there. Four oh, seconds today gone. it's looking good. Stop that clock right now. Thank oh, you. 5.95. Very quick, but what is it? Well, it's the fingertips 
personal stereo. A personal stereo? Yeah, let me show you, right? Uh, just wrap the string over your fingers like that and hold it to the side of your head. Go all on. right then. That's it. And now bang the hanger against the table. Okay. Oh, wow, I'll tell you what, it sounds like a bell ringing and the sound like goes from one ear to the other when the coat hanger swings. There you go, see that's the stereo bit of the personal stereo. We well, you know, I can hear all these different sounds, but when I take the string out my ears I can't hear anything. Exactly, and that's the personal bit of the personal stereo. Oh, wow, that is so cool. It is so cool. Look, let me explain how it works. Imagine this is Fern's head, all right? Um, she puts the string to the side of her head like this and she bangs the hanger against a solid object, which now will be the spoon. So there we go. And this noise runs up the string and into her ear. And hopefully you can hear that on my microphone. Look, don't take my word for it. Give it a go yourself. Make your very own fingertips personal stereo. And I guarantee you this will be one one minute make you'll definitely do in a minute. You know what, Steve? I'm very impressed. That is so clever. <laughs> Looks like you need a bit of practice there, Steve, mate. Oh. Now, if you need to practice your way to footy fame, you need to get yourselves a fingertip chip master. It's a really great game that sharpens your soccer skills, and all you need is a bit of time and some cardboard boxes. You know the type of boxes that they keep fruit and veg in, in shops? That's the type of box that you want to get your hands on. And you also need a tray or a large plate which is bigger than the size of a football. Now, pop this on your top box, and then just draw around your tray or plate, like this, right the way around. And once you've got that shape there, you need to cut out this circle. Now, be careful not to damage the circle itself because you're going to need that a bit later on. But don't worry too much about this slit here because we can neaten that up as we go along. Now, the first thing you need to do is make this look like a football. And I reckon that the classic black and white design looks best. So fill it in however you like. And then you need to make your goal. Now, your goal is actually your bottom box. All you need to do is just colour this bit in white and then leave that to dry. And once you've got a nice white base, you can just cover it in black crosses like this, so it looks like a goal. And then you could write goal, like someone's just scored on the back of the net there. And now it's time to assemble your fingertips, chip master. All you need to do is get some PVA glue and just spread it all along your bottom box there, along the edges, and a bit down this end too, like that, all along there. And then you can just sandwich the two boxes together. So get your top box back and just pop that on top like that. Give it a little press down and then leave it to dry. Now, once it has dried and it looks like this, you need to turn it over onto its side and draw around the bottom edge onto a piece of cardboard. You need to cut this out twice so you've got two shapes like this. And then you need to just put one on this side like that, press that down, and one on this side and it covers up those nasty holes at the edge of your box. And remember that slit that you cut earlier on to cut your football out? Well, now it's time to cover it up, and we're going to do that by using collage. Now, this area here needs to look like a football pitch, so you can cut out lots of different snippings from gardening magazines or football magazines. I've cut some out here, some foliage and some football pictures and stuff. And then mix up some PVA glue and some water, and just paste some right over the top of your box like this, and then you can just go ahead and cover up the whole thing. You need to cover the whole surface of this, just stick some down, and then after, once again, give another coat of PVA and water over the top and it will dry clear, so don't worry about seeing all that. And then also, you need to cover all these sides in collage too, but I've used a different type of collage in this time. I've used people's faces, look at that. I've cut out different heads and faces from magazines and TV guys and stuff. And I've just stuck them all down, the same as I did before, and put some PVA glue over the top, and it looks like a big cheering footy crowd. And don't forget, you also need to put your football back in place. And there you have it, your fingertips chip master. Now, if you'd like to have a go at making the chip master, you could watch back your video if you've taped the show, or you could check out our fingertips website. If not, grab yourself a pen and paper right now for an action replay. Take two fruit boxes and draw a circle on one of them, and then cut out your circle and paint it like a football. Make the inside of the hole look like a net. Then all you need to do is stick your two boxes together using plenty of glue. Just cover the sides with card, and decorate your boxes with pictures of greenery 
and cheering crowds. And there it is. Doesn't it look fantastic? So now you're ready to get practising your chipping skills. Steve, want another go? Yes, I yeah? do. OK, now what you need to do is put your chip master up against the wall on a flat surface, then take out your football, frisbee it along the floor. Now, wherever it lands, you need to put the ball on that point and chip it into your chip master. Okay. You ready to have a go? I am you so ready. Person. OK, go watch this, Fern. You are going to be so impressed. I'm oh, ready really? for it now. OK. Come and bring it on. Here we go. You what ready? Do you do for us? What? Oh, come ah, on. That was rubbish. Ben, it's not that easy, you know. Seriously, you wouldn't be able to do it. All right, then, Steve, all a bit. Let's have a go. Next time on Fingertips, we show you how to make the skateboard noteboard. In Physics Fingertips, we've got all the answers to help you make up your mind. And in Party Fingertips, we show you how to make the prehistoric yucky dip. Well, that's it for today's Fingertips. Hey, if you want to make anything from today's show, then check out the Fingertips website. The address is on the screen right now. So we'll see you next time for more Fingertips. See ya. Bye-bye.